Today we're going to review the Predator 3500 inverter generator. We recently had an opportunity to use this off-grid in two of the worst winter storms Southwest Texas has ever seen. So it's going to give us a great opportunity to do a real-world review on this generator and how it functions in extremes. This was not the intent of our original plan. We wanted to go from brewery to brewery, from Alabama out to Texas, and then back again, stopping and reviewing our use of the Predator off-grid along the way. However, Mother Nature had some other things in mind, so we were only able to make one of our stops at Siluria Brewery in Alabaster, Alabama, just south of Birmingham. But what a great place that was. There it is in the back of my Tundra, the Predator 3500 inverter generator, a portable generator. Fit nicely in the back of the Tundra, as you can see it there as we bring it out. A lot of great things with this generator. So let's go ahead and watch as we unbox this generator in hyperspeed here. And we can see that it comes with a number of parts, including an oil filter and some tools to help arrange things. And here it is outside and looks good, doesn't it? You can also see that the Predator 3500 comes with this 30 amp twist lock RV adapter. Um, pretty straightforward in terms of uh, how it works. Uh, you can see it here. It's a uh, pretty self-explanatory piece. And it simply plugs in just like that right there. And you're ready to hook up. Now, if we take a look at the front of our Predator 3500 right here, we can see there's a little red toggle switch right there at the bottom by the wheels that locks and unlocks the front wheels. Right now, the front wheels are unlocked. And as you can see, they roll freely. If we uh, toggle this switch to the other position right there, now we can see those front wheels locked and they don't want to roll anywhere from there to help holding that much more stable. It does have a little bit of push back and forth with it there. As we're getting our Predator 3500 set up here for initial use by installing our battery that comes with it as well as filling it with oil, let's talk about our different parts here. First, as we look at one side, we can see here is our oil fill area on one side of the Predator 3500. You can see mine was just a little bit banged up there because I had already used it before I'd taken this photo. On the other side, we can see there is our pull start for this area. It works great and we'll see that start up here in just a little bit. It also comes with an electric start that we'll review once we get to the front area. On the back area, we see here is our exhaust. Our exhaust gets pretty hot. You want to make sure that is in a well-ventilated area when you're running it. You also want to make sure you put nothing flammable close to it or nothing that you might be concerned about melting, etc. Make sure you don't touch that area when it's running as you could get a bad burn. We look at the front fascia of our Predator 3500 going from left to right. We see our parallel ports. We see the hookup for our RV attachment of 30 amp. We see our 220 volt connections. We see our 12 volt connections. And then moving all the way over there to the right, we see our uh, start positions from off, run, and start. And we also see the electric start button as well as the button for running in eco mode. On top here, we can see our fuel gauge and we can see our gas fill cap. Let's see how this sounds when we start it up. So this is going to be our initial start of our uh, Predator here in the back of our Tundra. Um, as you can see, we've got a full uh, five gallon fuel tank we're going to take with us that does have the st um, stabilizer in it. Um, we also have filled with uh, Mobile One full synthetic and we're going to give this a start. This is not a demonstration. This is the first full crank of this unit. Now, the first things you want to do is you want to switch our, uh, our uh, economy throttle here to off. We want to turn ourselves over to start here. And then we're going to go up here and give this thing a pull. Now it's on, and as that green light appears there, we're going to switch it over to run. Was our first full startup of the uh, Predator 3500. It was a pretty darn easy pull, pretty darn easy start, worked perfectly. Um, we're going to let it run here for a little bit and charge the battery. I'm going to tell you that right now it's cranking on 124 volts as we turn it into economy mode there. You can hear the change in the sound. Uh, very, very quiet economy mode. And with economy mode off, 
off, it's still pretty darn quiet. So of course we also filled this with stabilizer for our fuel and we also filled 10W30 oil, a total of 20 ounces was required. And we intended to use this from stop to stop heading out west. But as you can see here, as we got just east of San Antonio, we hit our first ice storm and we were forced to stop and boondock at a cracker barrel. And this is what it looked like outside on our so truck. we've been putting our Predator 3500 to the test here with our Lance travel trailer. We are headed through a winter storm in Texas, as you can see, that's not dirt on the front of my RV right here. That is a sheet of ice and we ran the Predator. I just left it bent up back of the or the back of my pickup bed this morning because uh, I didn't feel like lifting it out again. Plugged it into the RV, but it is doing a great job. And I don't know how well you can hear it from here, but that's about as loud as it gets. As I back away, and oh, I'm about 20 feet away right now, and at 20 feet away, I can hardly hear that thing at all. I'm just talk in a normal voice, and that's on full throttle right now. That thing just does fantastic. It's operated our microwave, it's operated uh, our air conditioning when we need it, and it's definitely charged our batteries back up and operated all our devices inside curling iron, coffee maker, all that's been running great right with that thing. We left San Antonio and the roads were clear on Highway 90 heading west towards Del Rio. Once we got past Del Rio and Comstock, we hit yet another ice storm and scenes like this were not uncommon. The temperatures the night before got down into the low teens and none of our pipes froze, so we were really pleased with how the Predator did. After the ice storm stopped, we then got into this whiteout blizzard and that created a new set of problems and we decided to stop in Marathon, Texas, where temperatures got down to six that evening. I've never had a problem with my tonneau cover leaking even in downpours and driving rain. However, I don't live where it snows anymore and what I did happen was underneath my tundra it was drafting the snow up off the road. It was snowing so heavy and with temperatures down in the single digits I was a little bit concerned about how the Predator would do but it started right up and it kept us warm all night. We had hot water, none of our pipes in our Four Seasons Lance travel trailer froze. We were really pleased with how it was performing so far. So we had made it to our final destination down in the Terlingua Ranch Studi Butte area, which is in between Big Bend National Park and Big Bend Ranch State Park. This area of Texas is very remote and we were camping off grid. We would use our Predator generator to run approximately two hours in the evening to make sure our batteries were well charged so that we could run our heater through the night to keep anything from freezing as temperatures were always dipping down into the low teens each night we were there. During the day there was a fair amount of sun and it would also heat up to about 50 degrees or so while we were there. So it also made it uh, so that we didn't have to run the generator during the day. In the mornings we would run the generator for about an hour, enough again to charge the batteries but also to heat the hot water and to run our coffee maker and the blow dryer that my wife used when she was done taking a shower. Wednesday night it started raining and in the early morning hours, the rain stopped. Little did we know that the rain stopped because we were about to wake up to this scene the next morning. Well, here we are unintentionally winter camping again with our Predator 3500. It's been doing a great job keeping our Lance Four Season Travel Trailer warm inside, keeping our pipes from freezing. Um, very unexpected here in Southwest Texas, um, as you can look at. February 18th has had a snowstorm February 14th Valentine's Day and now we got another one and all this snow probably it was rain overnight it's all turned to snow probably in the last uh, two hours and as you can see there you got a good three or four inches on the ground with it hopefully it warms up as expected tomorrow and we're able to move on before heading home the next day, we made a trip into Marfa, Texas. As you can see here, there were snow-covered streets and everything was shut down. So it was quite an unusual sight in Marfa, Texas. The next day, we got up and headed home. And while the roads were clear and there was no ice on the roads, all the Chihuahuan desert terrain was covered in snow. 
when we got to the town of Sanderson on Highway 90, the Sheriff's Department had closed it off and told us we either had to wait or turn around and head 60 miles back toward Marathon because they had semis off the road up ahead. Apparently, Del Rio, Texas had received 11.7 Once we made it all snow, the way back to I-10, the, the roads them. were really clear sailing, but we ran into a new problem. Due to the devastation in the state of Texas and the two storms back to back, no fuel deliveries had been made and I-10 gas stations were out of fuel. So we were forced to stop for the night in Ozona, Texas, but that allowed us to have a great meal at a place called Destiny's and to use the Predator one additional night for off-grid experience. And again, it performed just as fantastically as it had on the other occasions. We were able to run everything. We were able to do everything we needed with it. And although this is not a long-term review, this is definitely a real-world review of the Predator 3500. And I can say it powers our Lance travel trailer and all the appliances without a problem. And I can't recommend this uh, highly enough, especially when you consider the cost of it versus some of the better known competitors.